Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to G-Bear's Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. And it's another hot one. You know, there's like, uh, I think now it's 10 weeks straight of uh, temps over 100 degrees out here. That's a lot of heat. Okay, so I was just asked recently by a friend and a an old customer of mine um, that uh, what I was doing to keep cool out here well I replied to her as I will tell you what I do is I get up early in the morning I sit down at the table and I uh, read the funnies on my uh, phone and I check the local news to see if the world is was destroyed while I was sleeping or if uh, aliens landed and evacuated all the people of the earth except me oh I could only wish <laughs> just kidding I'd, I'd miss all you guys but um, what I did uh, mention was that uh, I get up I have my coffee I relax I do some puzzles I like doing uh, Sudoku on, on the phone also I've got that every day and I can do crosswords and all that stuff if I want to really waste some time. But I still got to get up and go out and do my chores. So what I, what I do to keep cool is right around 7 a.m. The uh, sun is on my solar panels uh, fully by then. My batteries are uh, pushing towards 14 volts on a 12 volt system. So I got plenty of power. So I turned the air conditioning on and as you can hear it's running right here and feel that nice cool air coming out of there. You feel that? Oh that's nice. So anyway, this is the temperature right now in this room. It's 80 degrees and it's 104 outside. So a 24 degrees drop when you walk into this cabin it feels just totally wonderful. Now. When I'm doing my chores, I have to throw a sweatband on because the humidity has been getting up around 20% or so. And that's really high for out here. But uh, we usually have single digits. And uh, just start doing a few items out there and next thing you know I can't see because the sweat's running in my eyes. So I, would, I put a sweatband on to, to do that and by the time I come in after chores, the sweatband is soaked. So I have to set that aside and break out a fresh one if I'm going back out. All right, so let's go back out. All right, I was also chatting with uh, uh, Richard on the uh, uh, YouTube about um, he wants to put together a solar system to run air conditioning. Um, I'll give you some facts about running air conditioning. Now, I've got two of them. I've got that one that I just showed you that's in the living room. And then I've got that one over there that's in the bedroom. Okay, so I can run both of those at the same time during the day and still go into my shop and run power tools and do other things like that. The only thing I have to watch out for is using uh, water while both air conditioners are running because the hard start of the pump, the water pump itself, will make those two just start humming they'll like they're really struggling to get going so I have to be careful about that but that's no problem if I know I'm going to be using water to fill up the the chicken feeders and that stuff I just go in and shut one of the air conditioners off and I'm fine I can I can use all the water I want to use from there all right so on that last uh, point one four I showed you I did get some water in here and I'm going to be draining that out to my uh, mulberry trees because they need to be uh, fed. They need a drink. So when it gets really hot, I was telling my friend and old customer, I come out here to the tote koozie. And I just pulled the cover off this a little while ago and I got it sitting and leaning against the side down there because I'm going to be dropping into this and as soon as I I'll start uploading this video I'm in there 
And I got that little stool down there that's all plastic. There's no metal to it at all because everything that I've used to sit on down there that had any metal in it ended up getting corroded because of the, um, the chlorine. I use bromine right now, but the chlorine. Now I've got the circulating filter pump running in this and it's nice and quiet as you can hear. But, uh, I, do, I do run that to make sure it picks up any uh, junk and sediment that's in there. And then I have a little uh, fish net over there that I use to uh, clean out any floating insects that are on the top. All right, and this all runs on a Harbor Freight 12 volt battery and this 100 watt solar panel. Uh, the uh, controller in there is one of the original Harbor Freight 45 watt solar panel sets. Uh, controller and it still works just fine I have about three or four of those and uh, as you can see with the pump running I'm at 12.6 here and I have a USB port on here uh, 5 volt and then I have these other ports for plugging other stuff in and this is the switch for running the filter pump as you can see it's in the on position now I can also take this thing and plug it into that cigarette lighter jun junction right there. And let's see if I can do this. Uh, I got a fly just bit me on the ear. I'm trying to get, trying to get sexy with me. Oh, tried to get me on the shoulder too. Okay, so let's see. I got that on and there's a switch. Now that makes a little bit of noise. It takes a few seconds for it to fill up the uh, I don't know what's going on there. Normally the bubbles are coming by now. I don't run that very often because it's so noisy. Okay, looks like I'm going to have to check that out and see what happened. But, anyway, as you can see, I'm still at 12.6, so it doesn't really draw anything down. And I want to put a more powerful blower motor on here than this one, but one that's also a little bit quieter. Anyway, that's, uh, that's what I do to, to keep cool. I, I jump into that. Now you can see the monsoonal clouds over the mountains over there. Um, my friend Andy texted me earlier and said that uh, he was looking at the weather from my area and apparently uh, the next eight days in a row or something we've got a 40% chance each day of having rain well that's a 60% chance of not having rain and uh, I've been uh, um, programmed to learn that uh, whenever they say uh, forty percent chance of rain. Bet on the sixty percent not chance of rain. <laughs> That's just the way it goes. All right, so we're talking about the air conditioning early, earlier, and uh, you got to remember that an air conditioner uses uh, about twelve, thirteen hundred watts. Um, just one of those little window ones there. Now, that's the, uh, like the average, or not the average, but the uh, the standard um, window air conditioner, 12 to 1300 watts. All right, so I've got 3,450 watts of solar. So we're looking at half of that um, is uh, going into just running one air conditioner. So if I run both of them during the day when the sun is out and beating on my solar panels, it doesn't hurt my batteries whatsoever. It keeps them well above charge. So it's still charging my batteries at that point. And right now, you can see that I'm at 13 on the Renogy and 13.3 on the Midnight. So, you know, I'm air conditioning the cabin. It doesn't cost me anything. So I, may, I just let it run. Now, he was talking about uh, getting a cheap um, Harbor Freight Pure Sign Inverter. And I don't recommend that. 
you got to go for one of these. Go for a nice Ames power. Um, I like the uh, split phase. As you got to understand that it, this is a 4,000 watt system, but split phase means that it's 2,000 watts per hot leg. Because I'm gonna, I can run 220 volts off of this, not uh, not the 120 uh, only. I can run 240 volts if I need to for some of my power tools in the shop. So uh, when you're talking about 4,000 watt inverter split phase, that's 2,000 per per leg. So you've got a maximum of 2,000 watts um, for all of your 120s. Either one side or the other side, one phase or the other phase. All right. So that's about it. I went to town today. Um, wasn't happy. I had to go buy uh, more chicken feed because I was uh, down to uh, one one more feeding left in the bags that I had. And I buy them by the 50-pound bags. I usually buy two bags of uh, scratch grain and two bags of... Um, um, layers crumbles as for the hens and that's got uh, high calcium in it for them it's got a lot of oyster shell so I usually buy those two and I used to get uh, one one bag of each for $14.89 okay now, now I get one bag just one bag not one bag of each but just one bag for twenty dollars and forty nine cents each. Oh my word! That's a good thing I like eggs. But uh, you got to remember one thing: eggs now in the store are even the generic eggs that you buy at like uh, the uh, discount grocery stores. They're pushing four dollars a dozen for the cheapest eggs you can find out there. And uh, you don't know what you're getting when you're buying those. <clears throat> so I, uh, I go through at least a dozen a week by myself. If I've got visitors, of course, I've uh, got to use some extras. And then if I do some baking or cooking or something like that, um, I'll use some extras. So I bet on, my, on normally uh, one and a half to two dozen eggs a week. And I'm getting that even though this extreme heat has caused the chickens to slow down on their laying. I'm still getting plenty of eggs to keep myself supplied, but I don't have any to sell to my neighbors. Uh, not right now, anyway. Hopefully it'll be cooling down pretty soon and uh, I'll be able to uh, uh, get them laying some more. And little baby chick is doing just fine. And I just put some uh, fresh food and water in there for mama and baby. And I uh, put some mealy worms in there for baby. Baby loves those mealy worms already. But that's good because uh, when you got a baby chick and you want them to grow fast, you want to give them lots of protein. Protein is good. That's about all I have, everybody. I'm going back inside where it's cool. I want to, tomorrow I want to get this, um, try to get this one and that one taken out of here. And uh, at least, at least those two. And if I can do that, uh, I can pull out this carpeting that's in here because it's been beaten and soaked and stained and everything else. And I've got a nice piece of brown carpet in the, um, the garage that I can cut a fresh new piece to put in here. And then I can uh, set up the sidewall here and there to hold my prospecting equipment. So I'll have all my... Uh, my metal detectors and my shovels and my picks and all that stuff will all be in the van So if I'm driving down a road and I see a nice outcropping I can pull over and get it now lastly I was going to save this for another thing um, I haven't been able to work on the rock crusher because of the excessive heat I got to get really covered up to work with a welder and the grinder and I'll show you um, working with a grinder, I don't know if you can see it, look at the pits in my arms from the hot metal 